My name is William Leeler. Everybody calls me Wim. I work at Flight Stats, which is, nobody knows who Flight Stats is, but uh, we're the people who draw maps with showing where the position of airplanes are. Um, a lot of people know our website, don't know who we are. Uh, I'm, they, their big thing they do is collect a lot of data about flights and I was hired to try to make interesting visualizations out of all their data because they have huge amounts of data. So m the way I think of my job is I'm swimming around in this ocean of data trying to find interesting currents and do something with them. Mapping in some ways is a perfect use of open source. I mean because it is so, um, there isn't, it's not like a lot of things where everybody wants to do the same thing with some tool. In mapping, everybody's use of mapping is slightly different. You know, like for us, we're looking at airplanes, so we want a map that doesn't stand out very much. You know, we're not, we only want the map there to be for reference, you know, so you can tell where an airplane is. But we don't need a lot of detail about what highway this is and stuff like that. So we wanted a, a relatively simple map. And so we actually, I, I think our website looks much better now because we were able to pick maps. There's hundreds of free maps out there. And a lot of them are really beautiful and well done maps. Uh, and you could, they're, most of them are based on OpenStreetMap data, so they have to be free. So you're, anybody who creates a map like that, they, most of them are happy when people use their <laughs> maps, you know, because they put a lot of work into it. And they can't really charge money for them. You know, because they're under Creative Commons license or such. So um, it's interesting because just last week, Google announced that they were cutting the price um, because I think they finally figured out that they were going to lose every one of their possible paying customers because nobody wanted to pay the really high rates that they said they were going to charge for them. So they cut them by 88%. So instead of $4 a thousand views, they're charging 50 cents. Um, and so at that point, I sort of, that happened on Friday, and I asked people around at work, I said, well, so are you sad now that we spent all this effort switching over? And no, everybody was like, no, we're really happy. We like the maps better. Um, also, because it's open source on the library, and because everybody's uses are different, you almost always want to customize the library. You want to add things to it. Like, we wanted to have weather on top of things, and we have these airplanes that move around, and we wanted to show other types of data. And adding something like that to a proprietary solution is actually relatively difficult. You know, Google doesn't give you the source for their libraries. Um, you know, a lot of people have hacked into Google Maps and figured out how to do things, but that's a lot of work. Um, we ended up going with Leaflet, which is, you know, as our, AP, as our mapping API, has a wonderful object model. It's very easy to add new features to it. So, um, so it's actually saving us a lot of work now. We can do a lot of things that were difficult before much easier now. Well, you know, when you say open source maps, there's the map data that is crowdsourced, and then there's like the libraries. Um, I mostly work, I mean, the nice, I, there's good things about both. The nice thing about the map side of it is that all of a sudden you have these artists who are creating beautiful maps, really lovely maps. Um, there's a guy who works at Stamen Design, which is a, you know, they do beautiful stuff down in San Francisco. He actually spent like two years of his life creating this set of map tiles. It's only for the U.S., but it's, it's a really beautiful map. We're actually using it for some of the stuff that we're doing um, because it's all based on open street maps, so anybody can use it. But he was able to create this beautiful map. They did another one that looks like it's hand-painted with watercolors. It's really a gorgeous map, you know, and it's, Google would never have thought of doing something like that. You know, there's, it doesn't have a, a practical use in terms of driving directions or anything like that. But there's sometimes where you just want to show data on a map and the, the map is not the primary focus. With Google, the map had to be the primary focus. So maps like that nev never would have been produced by a commercial vendor and now we can have these beautiful maps and use them so that's on the map side on the API side it, it's so much better now I mean the fact that I have a library and I have the source for it and if there's something it doesn't do I can go in and hack it and I put that back into the source 
it's great. I mean, I've been doing maps for a long time, and when I first started doing maps, even with Google Maps, it's like getting things to work was so difficult. You know, you were constantly fighting with the tools. And now Google Maps has gotten a lot better, but there's all these, you know, but having the source is even a step beyond that. I can do all this stuff that was really hard to do in the past. I can do it really easily. So um, I think it's a great time to be doing mapping stuff right now. I'm having, I mean, I tell my company all the time, I can't believe you're paying me to have this much fun, you know, because I'm, I mean, I'd probably, they could fire me and I'd still do it at so much fun, you know, or they could lay me off or whatever. Um, it's really a fun time in mapping right now. And it's, I think, a lot of more interesting. I mean, there was sort of an explosion in maps when Google released the API. You know, and people started doing all these map mashups, and then it kind of settled down a little bit. And now I think there's going to be another explosion as people start doing more interesting things.